For five lessons now, we've learned not quite everything you need to know about conducting, but an awful lot. We've learned how to keep time. We've learned different beat patterns. We've learned what to do with the left hand. We've even learned basically how to try to put them together. Today, we're going to do some exercises that perhaps are a little complicated, but with a bit of practice, will create more independence for your hand and give you more weapons in your conductorial arsenal. One of them is to understand that although we've talked about the right hand as being mostly properties for keeping time, keeping everybody together, that we've left out a couple of the basics that are important. First basic is the upbeat. How does the orchestra really know when to start? Do you remember all those lessons ago when we talked about that line that beats must start on and that your degree of length must be the same going up as it is coming down as well as the speed? That's how they know. In other words, it does no good for a whole orchestra of say 100 people to see because they don't know where to put that note. It must be so they see the equidistant pattern. We can also help the orchestra out by using another part of our expressional devices, and that's taking a breath. After all, if you play a wind instrument, you're going to have to take a breath anyway to play a note, right? Uh, so you might as well try to find a way to incorporate the breath into your beat. Uh, but notice, I still started on the line, I still went up to a certain point and came down. I didn't stop and come down, and I didn't stop and come to the middle or go below the line. It's a good exercise for you. Uh, helps every time. Also helps with pizzicatos in the strings. Sometimes we get so busy with the complexity of a score that duties normally assigned to the left hand must come over to the right. Supposing there are a lot of different entries of orchestra musicians and you don't have time to show them to make that crescendo or diminuendo with your left hand, you can do it with your right hand alone. See, the tempo didn't change, but the size did, and therefore the volume incrementally. Let's stay with that four pattern for a moment and do something really tricky. Not all pieces are simply one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Some of them have accents or punctuation points, and it can be on any beat. You never know. So what if a piece goes one? Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four. So we're increasing the size of the beat just prior to that accent. It's really difficult. Two, three, four, one. But there is a trick to learning how to do that. You take a piece of paper, roll it up to a ball, put it somewhere where you can get to it, and you're going to pick up that piece of paper on the beat that you want accented. You do not do it until then. I'm doing them randomly, but I'll show you, for example, if I want to give an accent on the third beat, I will go one, two, three, four, one. Or, if I want to do it on the fourth beat, one, two, three, four, like that. It forces you to learn a little bit about how to get your hand to do double duty, keep time, but at the same time, place where an accent can be. And you want to do that while you're using your left hand as well, both with the paper and then eventually with the baton. So you're going one, two, three. 
And if you need to use both hands for some of these, that's perfectly appropriate too. Now it's time for you to start learning how to conduct some of your very favorite pieces. Wait a minute. We haven't learned how to read a score. Uh-oh. Well, shouldn't be a problem. There have been a lot of great musicians who couldn't read music. Frank Sinatra among them. But this is a conductor. Oh, Sinatra also conducted, that's right. So how do they do it? How do we learn to actually see in the music what we need to convey with our gestures? And who are all these people in the orchestra anyway? Where are they? How can I remember each of them? That's what our next few lessons are gonna be about. Combining our technique with understanding how to read a score and how to really lead the musicians. Thank you.